My name is Joe. I'm the founder of OneSource. I've been teaching MCAT for like, what, 11 or 12 years, I guess 12 years now, since it's 2024. Uh, I know that, well, sometimes people tell me I don't look old enough for that to be the case, but hopefully that remain, it remains true. Uh, anyway, it does so, remain true. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, I appreciate it. So um, this, and also Abril and Sharon uh, and Anki now th this this uh, slideshow is the same one that I gave for the boot camp last time. Um, I'm just going to run through it really quickly for Erica's benefit and for anybody else who might join and watch this video later. Um, and then we're going to talk about both courses, any questions any of you have. I think getting to your questions as quickly as possible makes the most sense here because, again, it is a relatively small group joining. So uh, anyway, so... Um, I did well on the MCAT, but it makes sense I should do well on the MCAT because I run an MCAT company. Primarily what I want to the the answers or the questions that I want to answer for the boot camp today and for both for the for the master class as well are these. Um, who is it for? Uh, what do you get out of it? What does it cost? How can you sign up? And any and obviously any other questions with definitely like a bias toward that last one. Um, the first question on who this for who this is for, the boot camp is really for kind of anybody in the MCAT prep process. Obviously, people who are earlier on are going to benefit probably a little bit more because it's going to push their pace, whereas people later in the process will benefit from the perspective that a lot of it's going to be for them and maybe get get different, um, a, a little bit different perspective on the topics that are on the MCAT that you've already seen. But in either case, it should benefit everybody. The masterclass, on the other hand, is more for people who have already done a pass-through content review and who are seeking to gain a better understanding of the strategy perspective on this. And so depending on which one, you know, I think both of them will help you with strategy, but the boot camp is kind of like, if you were to set them up in sequence, the boot camp would be the first course. And then the master class would be the second course in, in that sequence. Master class being more focused on uh, addressing practice questions, practice problems, moving through passages, and really getting a better big picture understanding of everything, which the boot camp's beginning uh, begins to facilitate early on. Uh, so these are the various different things we're going to discuss here. Obviously, the, the main component of each of these courses is the live online sessions in which I'm teaching the vast majority of them. Uh, we also started adding office hours in. We started this at the first during the first week of the first boot camp just because we wanted to make sure that we were able to answer everybody's questions outside of class. And we did have a lot of questions at the end of each meeting. So we threw those in. We do those a couple of times a week, usually at least once. I guarantee you we'll do them once a week. Some weeks, like last week, I think we did three sessions. Um, so the whole point here is just to answer questions from anybody who shows up. Those end up being pretty useful sessions in and of themselves. Uh, everybody who teaches with us is an expert on this. Um, our cutoff for hiring people is 525 or better from the score that you get. And then uh, we also require you to have some degree of past teaching experience as well. So uh, you will get more qualified people working with you at our company than anywhere else in the industry. It's just objectively true from the score perspective and from the, the training process that they go through as well. And then uh, something that we've incorporated in this course that you're not going to see anywhere else is the option to create a personalized study plan with one of our tutors at the very beginning of it. That wasn't as much a part of the very first boot camp that we did, but um, it is present now. And it's something that everybody signs up for my director of operations, Colleen, who made this uh, PowerPoint presentation that I'm unfamiliar with and presenting anyway, <laughs> is the person that facilitates all of those meetings happening. And so that's something that we want everybody to be able to set up at the very beginning, because everybody is going to come to these courses from a little bit different place. And so true to our kind of message of personalization of the entire process, we just want to make sure that we're able to continue personalizing for you as we move through this with you. Uh, and then last thing on here is the student portal, which I'll show you all in a second. So uh, the live online sessions in the boot camp are more focused on integrating concepts from a basic science content perspective. What we've done is try to touch every concept on the MCAT on the way through all of that material so that we can facilitate a better big picture understanding so that, for instance, when you see electrostatics problems, you're also able to think from the perspective of the nervous system or vice versa and understand how those electrostatics equations matter for determining directions that ions flow across a membrane in biology or for a direction that electrons are going to move through a wire given a certain electric potential difference in electrochemistry or in physics. Uh, that is the main focus of the boot camp. It's also sort of the main focus of the master class as well, except that the master class is going to be more oriented around practice problems and practice questions because that is most of what that is designed to cover. There will be covering a lot of U World and AAMC, especially later on in the process. I want to start incorporating as much AAMC stuff as possible there. 
Um, again, I'm going through this slideshow very quickly so that you can all answer or ask questions at the end, because I feel like that's probably going to be more useful for those of you who have taken the time to show up here this evening. Uh, so the weekly office hours I mentioned already are going to be at least once a week, but it's starting to be the case that we do these two or three times a week, most weeks. Um, and again, anybody can show up and answer, ask questions. I have a lot of people show up who just don't ask anything at all. They just kind of sit there and absorb things that other people are asking because, but you know, chances are, if you have a question, other people in the same class have questions as well. And so that I think has been probably a undervalued, um, better than I would have expected component of this to this point. Uh, this just talks about our expert instructors already talked about them. They got their limelight. We'll move on from that. This is mentioning the personalized study plan. Uh, like I said, at the beginning of either one of these courses, you'll meet with one of our tutors one-on-one -on -one for about an hour and just build out a plan that makes sense for you based on where you are in the process, how much MCAT prep you've done to this point, what your goals are, the resources you have on board, preferred learning style, time available each week. So you'll have a syllabus that says what the course is doing already, but then there will be spots within that syllabus for them to enter in things that are specific for you. So for instance, if you're really advanced in this and you're wanting to do the boot camp because you feel like you need more content review prior to taking the test, then we're probably going to discourage you from taking every single quiz that we put into the boot camp because those quizzes are primarily designed for people who haven't seen as much MCAT stuff yet and want to test their knowledge prior to going into the meetings. Instead, with you, we would probably emphasize more you world in preparation for those meetings and also want to put in when you should take each of the AAMC full-length exams, for instance, as you near your exam. So everybody's in a little bit different spot, and this is our way of addressing that. Uh, I'll show you again what they look like here in just a second. Uh, then the custom 1SM student portal. That's what we're going to talk about right now. This is going to answer more questions than anything. Um, so this is a separate website that we have. This is not on the one source medicine or one source prep.com website. This is hosted somewhere else. Uh, this is for anybody who signs up for the course. You'll get access to this immediately. Uh, this thing at the very top is just a video that I made of myself explaining how to use it, which you're going to get firsthand right now. This next section where it says my MCAT, uh, it has a place for you to enter all of your goals. As you move through the process, you can enter goal scores, your best full length exam, uh, diagnostic exam score, or your ideal test date. That way we know when you're taking the test so that we can track that very easily without having to harass you and ask you all the time. Um, and then in this little spot right here, this is where you can find your personalized MCAT prep plan. This is the MCAT syllabus tab. This is what I said wasn't there for the first iteration of the bootcamp, but here we have basically assignments for you before and after each meeting that we do. So this class was meeting on Monday and Thursday. That's why this is showing Monday and Thursday. And you can see that you can see everything that's associated with each of these meetings here. So for instance, we'll put in uh, what the lecture title is, obviously. Uh, the, but we'll also put in um, either our quizzes that are associated with that lecture or uh, UWorld assignments that are associated with that lecture. We've also partnered with Chad's Prep, which is a platform that has a whole bunch of short video lectures and quizzes that you can take quizzes associated with the lectures, of course. And Chad has kindly gone through here and entered in uh, each of our lectures, which of his videos and quizzes corresponds with those lectures. So you can use those as additional resources on top of the 1800 or so quiz questions we have that we've written on top of the world uh, test that we have already pre-designed and assigned associated with each class period. So there's a ton of resources available, which is why we want you to have these columns associated with each day where it says additional material. And this is where you and the tutor in that initial planning meeting can go through and plan out which things make the most sense for you to be doing at every point along the way, based on where you are in relationship to your exam, also where you are in relationship to your goals on the exam. Uh, so this shows you the entire process. And we even have space down at the bottom in case you want to keep going after, you know, after the course is over, because most people who especially finish the boot camp likely aren't done studying for the MCAT at that point. Uh, the master class will have the exact same thing associated with it as well. Um, so then Back to the user portal here. This also has a place for you to track all of your full length exams. So after you take a full length, you just come in here and enter it in right here. That way we just track your data um, with you. If you want, you don't have to enter it in, but it's a good place to just keep track of things because you can also search in the search bar to find tests that you've already taken. I also created a new one here for the UWorld performance summary. So you can enter every UWorld test ID you do. And that way we can track your UWorld performance over time as well. We can generate graphs and everything based on this. So it's just kind of a neat way to see all of your data put out in front of you. But then the most important part of the user portal, I would say, is this section down here. This is where we keep all of our lectures. Um, so for each lecture, each lecture is represented by a card 
that is here. You can see some of these don't have videos associated with them yet. That's because they haven't happened yet. Um, but once we get to the very end of the course, every all of this will be completely built out where you have a video that's associated with each lecture. These are the six that we've done so far for this class. Actually, we've done this one too, but the video is still being processed because um, I just did it last night. But uh, each of these, if you click on it, if you click see more here, it will take you to a page that is specific to that lecture. You can very easily watch the lecture back just by clicking on the video thumbnail and it will play back for you whatever we were doing. So in this one, we were going over a UWorld passage. This was shortly after we had gone through endocrine and menstrual cycle and all of that. Um, this is just what we had been talking about that specific day. So you can see how we draw things out on the whiteboard during the meeting to illustrate concepts and connect ideas across disciplines. I'll be providing MCAT study tips as well as MCAT test taking tips the entire time as we move through this process. And this kind of gives you a sense of what the meetings look like. Uh, but prior to the meetings, we'll have quizzes for you to go through, as I mentioned before. Those are all linked here. Uh, this will be for both courses. We'll both Each of them will have quizzes, though the quizzes associated with the boot camp are probably more integral to the boot camp. We're going to put some of the same quizzes in the master class. But if you're doing the master class, that probably means that you're a little bit further into this right now. And likely you don't need the quizzes as much. Um, you, you will also have the Chad's Prep quizzes linked in as well, which could end up being a little bit more useful for you. And then uh, everybody should use these UWorld test IDs. I went through and painstakingly created test IDs that are associated with each lecture that we're doing so that once you've done the quizzes and any of the reading that's assigned, we've linked up all the Kaplan chapters with these as well. You can see Kaplan chapters linked to each meeting or the Khan Academy videos associated. We have a spreadsheet for that as well. Then you can go into the meeting, do the meeting, review the notes from the meeting, go back and watch the recording if you want. And then there will always be UWorld test IDs assigned at the end of each meeting that will give you passages and questions that are drawing from or based upon the ideas that we connected during that meeting. That way you have a really seamless integrated um, experience here that is also pulling you along at the pace that makes the most sense for you to get this done in a certain amount of time. Because as anybody who has done this knows, prepping for the MCAT takes forever <laughs> and you can, there, there's every rabbit hole you can dive into is infinitely deep. And so you can spend an inordinate amount of time on individual things if you're not being pulled along. And so to me, that's the, the benefit that this course has conferred in addition to the others that we planned on that I didn't really anticipate as much ahead of time, which is just forcing people to go faster than they're comfortable going so that they have more time at the end to integrate ideas, like I've said a million times, and to really dive into the sections and subsections that are giving them the most difficulty. The last thing I do need to mention with respect to the user portal here is the MCAT AI assistant. So this has been a long time coming. Uh, we finally got this up on the website for anybody to purchase access to. Now we just put that up like two days ago. But if you sign up to do this, one of these courses with us, you just get free access to it through the duration of your course. And then probably a few weeks afterward, I think right now I've got it set up for like 12 additional weeks. So probably that will be the answer. Um, but and even if you don't, it's $12 a month on the website, which is a much better deal than you could get even if you were just using the GPT base model. What we've done here is we took GPT-4 and then we trained it, we fine tuned the algorithm using 5,000 hours of our own tutoring videos and created something that is essentially the deity of the MCAT. Um, it's fantastic at answering any questions that you have to ask it. And that's uh, actually available as this MCAT AI assistant that's just free right here on the website. This is free for anybody to use. You're welcome to try it out. But if you go to MCAT AI assistant 2.0, or like I said, if you click through the course, then you get it for free. Um, then what you'll find is this version that we have given vision capabilities, which means that you can screenshot practice questions. So for instance, here's one that I have for practice. You can screenshot a practice question, drop it in here and say, explain this question for me. You should always say please, because these things will be our overlords one day. Um, and so you can, you can watch, it takes it about 10 seconds while these dots bounce up and down while this thing thinks out how it would solve this problem that we literally just screenshotted and dropped in here. And then it will eventually give you an answer shortly. There we go. All right. So here's the answer that it gave. And you can see how this is like a little bit different than the answer that it gave me earlier when I did the exact same thing. So this is the same question, slightly different answer, but ultimately we do get to be on each of these, which is the correct answer for this particular question. Um, and if you don't understand something about it, for instance, you can say, what do you mean by exocrine versus endocrine function? Also, what is T1DM? Because it stands for type 1 diabetes mellitus, which is what the question said. But in case you didn't know, you can just ask it questions and really have a conversation with this thing. This is super useful as you're going through practice questions, in my opinion. That's why we built it. Um, 
anyway, so that is the MK AI assistant. That is what the user portal looks like. If you, uh, I do want to get to questions. I'm also wanting to finish Colleen's PowerPoint because she was kind enough to make it. So let's jump back over here really quick and then we'll get to questions. Um, so yeah, that's the 1SM user portal. This is an example of it that we already talked about. This is Chad's prep stuff. Uh, you get a 25% discount on all of this stuff if you sign up to work with us in this course. That makes it down to $45 a month. We thought about just packaging it in with the course, but we didn't want to force people to purchase it if they weren't already going to purchase it. And so we left that as an option. You definitely don't need it if you're going through our course, um, but it is there as as an optional add-on. So uh, the course itself, this, this is for the bootcamp, costs $2,000, but if you uh, sign up within the next, I think it's week or so, we're offering a discount for people to sign up early because we wanna make sure we have enough people in this course to run it. And so if you sign up in the next week, then you get 20% off. Same applies for the um, masterclass, except that it's right now running at 2,500. And so if you sign up um, sometime in the next week, then you get it for $2,000, which is again, 20% off. And then if you're already a student, a tutoring student with us, you get an additional discount with a discount code that we'll send out to all of you or Colleen probably already has. But um, anyway, so these are, this is pretty much it for the information that I have pre-prepared for this. Here are a few testimonials that people have given us. I've got a bunch more if anybody wants to see more. Um, anyway, that is it for my presentation. I do definitely want to answer questions though. That's what I've left most of the time in this meeting for is to answer all of your questions. So please fire away if you have any. Not everybody all at once, please. Um, for the master class, um, how how would you like help to make sure that the students like don't fall behind in doing their U world? Oh, that's, like, so I mean, that's going to be the hardest thing is, is, you know, at, at some point you are accountable for, for pushing yourself to get the stuff done. I mean, you know, like one of the best ways to prevent yourself from falling behind is knowing that like, well, we're going to talk about these questions in this class. And if I don't get them done, then, you know, then I'm not going to benefit nearly as much from the, you know, from that class as possible as I could otherwise, you know, so I think that that, that pressure is is probably the most effective thing, at least for me anyway. I know that whenever I first started this company, it was like shortly after med school for me <laughs> and I'd had all these external deadlines forever. And so whenever I started this, I was just like, I, I, I can get this done tonight or I can get it done tomorrow. Tomorrow always sounded better. <laughs> and so I had to impose some, some deadlines, but uh, you know, that's, I think, so I think that just by nature of being involved in the class, I think that helps to some extent. But yeah, if I could, if I could generate motivation for people, then, then we'd make all of our classes free because I wouldn't need any money. <laughs> yeah, because if, any, if anybody could, if if somebody were able to generate motivation for other people, they would be able to to own the world at that point. Or not necessarily like motivation, but like of like helping to like, you know. To, to, for the students to like keep on track, you know, to not, um, you know, get lost in, in the trees for the forest, you know, seeing the forest instead of the trees. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean like, well, getting through a certain number of questions per day is going to require that you don't get too lost, uh, examining every tree in the forest, but, but look at the, the forest itself, but also just the way that we're going to talk about the questions in class together. There will be some questions for which we just ask everybody to send in the things that they would want to talk about ahead of time. And, you know, that'll be a big part of this, but there will be other, other passages and other questions that people really struggle with. And I'll always have surveys go out prior to each class saying like, okay, which, which questions were the hardest for all of you? Because we want to focus on those. And so on those, we might go through, you know, like we will in, in some cases go through sentence by sentence the passage and address the questions and their answer choices. That way I can provide you all with the right strategies as well. That's how we'll start out. And then we'll have some meetings that go at a faster pace just because people will be doing a little bit better job there. And some that will go a little bit slower whenever we go through more difficult things or like AMC full length exams. When we go through the AMC section bank stuff, that's probably going to be challenging for most people.
Um, and that's where some of the most of a, a lot of the value will be added here is those AMC explanations are pretty trash if anybody's aware of that. And so I think that that we can do a really good job adding value there. And you can also use the MCAT AI for that. About um, do you know about how many questions do you think of uh, we would do like or the for class. the math class, like about for, for every day? Yeah, the, so the goal is going to be questions that we go through together in class or questions that, that we assign you to go through. Which one are you asking about? Probably assign. We're gonna assign. Yeah, because we're going to assign you more questions than we're going to go through in class just because, you know, we can't see everything in class. Um, I think during that 12 weeks, everybody should finish E World. If you're not done with you World, World, you should finish E World. Uh, in addition, we will, my goal is to hit every section bank question. And probably three or four of the AAMC full length exams. And I, I don't think we'll do every AAMC full length exam because I don't think that there's time. And I think that some questions on some of those full lengths are worse than the section bank. So my priority is like section bank, AAMC full lengths, U World. And we're going to start heavy U World because I don't want anybody wasting AAMC stuff before they're ready to waste AAMC stuff. Um, and you know, some it's not also it's it's also not really wasting it if you go through it because you can go back through it again. Uh, but yeah, so that that's gonna be the priority. I think that in the class itself, we'll get through around a little over a thousand questions, is my hope. Then that meaning like questions that we actually address together, which means of that set that I just listed, probably like 25% of it, because there will be a, a certain percent that maybe 20%, because there will be a certain percent that you don't need somebody to go through with you that nobody really wants to ask about. And there will also be a certain percent that people can ask about in office hours as well. But sending out the surveys before classes is my main means of making sure that we cover the things that people struggle with the most. I've also been teaching this for a decade. And so like of those AAMC exams, there are certain questions that I know everybody's going to ask about just because everybody has for the last 10 years <laughs> and, or you know eight years, I guess, since these have been available. I know long-winded answers. Anybody else have <laughs> a question that merits a long answer? Or a short one. Uh, do you think we are prepared to take the exam after the class? Like directly go to the exam because I am planning to take the MCAT in April. Yeah, the the goal is so for the boot camp, the boot camp's goal is not to have you like ready to take the exam right when the class ends because it's it's mostly content but based. So the, the boot camp is that. The the master class, the idea is for you to be ready to take the test after you get done. Now, ev everybody's different on this. Different people have different goals. I want to make sure that I state all of those caveats. One thing I'm not going to do is that 515 bus guaranteed trash that like a lot of the larger companies in this industry do, because I think that that's totally disingenuous and misleading. And you know, I'll, I'll sign my name on that statement. Um, just because it, it's, I mean, look at the fine print sometimes, but uh, what I do, but the, the goal is that at the end of the MCAT bootcamp or the end of the, the master class, I forget all of our names that we gave all these things. Uh, the end of the master class, you should have finished U World and finished AMC stuff. And so at that point, there's nothing else to do. You're ready to take the test, which should be. And now if your goal score is still way above where you're scoring, then that's a different discussion. You know, is the score that you're getting have you capped out or have you not capped out that a lot of that depends on how much you've reviewed the practice questions that you've done. Um, I see people all the time say, Hey, I've done the last like 1500 U world questions. I haven't improved at all. And then I'll go into our faculty portal and look, and they haven't done any reviewing of any of those U world questions either. And so, you know, like that, uh, all of this is always going to come down to or so much of this is always going to come down to the work that you're willing to put in. And so if you just do the questions and don't review them, you're not going to make as much progress as somebody who doesn't. So I know that that's, again, another really long answer, but that's that's how I feel about that, if that makes sense. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Any other questions? And I'm planning on answering questions for like the next hour, just so you all know. <laughs> um, the first info session we did on this, like two months ago or three months ago, when we were first doing the first MCAT bootcamp, I answered like an over an hour of questions at the end of the, the meeting. So we're in it for the long haul. If anybody has any questions, I'm sure other people are wondering the same things.
And for any of you who showed up late, um, we can send out the video for this if you missed part of it. I know that people were kind of trickling in. You're also welcome to ask about anything we might have covered early in the meeting. How would I be able to access the recording? Uh, we'll send it out and we'll send a link in an email. All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll have Colleen, just look for an email from either Colleen at onesourceprep.com or MCAT at onesourcemedicine.com or info at one. I don't know. I don't, she has like three emails with us. <laughs> um, so just look for an email from one of us sometime in the next tomorrow evening, I would say tomorrow evening or, or yeah, probably tomorrow evening. And I'm also going to be doing a handful more of these these exact same meetings that we're doing right now with probably a lot more people in them over the next couple of days. This is just the first one. We didn't really run many ads to this one. So um, just to clarify, so you're saying we would probably do like for each day, a thousand questions or like each week, a thousand questions? <laughs> Oh, not each, no. I mean, like, so inside of the course itself, we'll do about a thousand questions together. Uh, questions will sign outside of it. If you once you add up AMC stuff in your world, it ends up being about five thousand questions, um, maybe forty five hundred questions, something like that. And so, you know, we'll uh, we'll put all of those in it. The goal is to get through all of it, right? Well, but like, yeah. example, like, uh, do you, would you know like about how much like say like a number of like daily that you would want us to go through if you in order if you like to prepare the, for the meetings um since it were since we're meeting twice a week i would say probably probably about a hundred ish questions per meeting is is what that's going to come down to probably just because um maybe a hundred because what i'm thinking about is okay 4500 questions three months that comes out to be about 50 questions a day. Mm -hmm. If you give yourself a day off, so maybe 150 questions that you would want to do prior to each meeting. Now, some of those will be way more because if you're doing a full length exam, that's 230. So likely near the end of the course, part of the reason that we have one of the meetings on Sunday each week is because I'm going to tell everybody, take a test on Saturday. And then we'll review that same test on Sunday once you've all sent me your questions that you want to do. And if you don't, if you forget to send in questions, I should be able to go through them without you telling me because I've done this long enough. <laughs> so like I, you know, every now and then I'll stumble on something, but you know, I've, I've, I've seen each one of these a million times. So um, that shouldn't be a big deal at all. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Any other questions? Trying to think of some of the things other people asked earlier to anticipate FAQs. All the meetings will be recorded. If you miss one, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, you'll have my notes that I take after the meetings are over. Trying to think of other things. I'm going to start calling on people. I'm kidding. That's like one of the most painful things for me. That's one thing that I will not do. Just if I just had one question. Uh, yeah. For the master, the boot camp, I remember you doing a additional acid base lecture. Um, Is that on the site? I just can't seem to find it. Uh, No, I didn't. We didn't post that. We Well, we didn't post it at all just because there's not a spot for it. But I can send it to you. Did you miss it? Yeah, I missed it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll get that edited and sent over to we do need to edit that one because it was just like some um yeah, we just ran over on that that first acid base meeting. So I just wanted to add more value for that. So yeah, we went over it for like two hours. It was there there was not as much participation in it as I wanted there to be. And so it is a little okay. bit slow in places, but um I'll I'll definitely send it to you. 
thank you it's, thank it's you. definitely thorough like it's it's extremely thorough because we you know i had like an yeah hour yeah plus of stuff and we took two hours to go through it so um you know no, it's no, I feel like lots of examples i can benefit from that because it's this is like acid base is like the only thing that's left on my radar for content review okay um, yeah that, that'll help you and so i like i yeah. just yeah, and i was doing your questions i was getting them all wrong and i was like oh damn like i need to to better review this stuff yeah yeah um, yeah it, it'll help you a ton then because because what i started out with in that meeting i actually went a step back further than acids and bases and started with just another discussion on like what makes a molecule stable or not and then we went from there into like the nature of acid base chemistry and the the quantitative um interactions that you think about with ka and q and and all that but then starting to consider the stability rules from the perspective of like electronegativity and resonance uh -huh. etc in the context of conjugate bases and if you look at the stability of a conjugate base it tells you everything you need to know everything about the yeah of, of an acid so yeah yeah so yeah. And that's what we and we did a ton of examples talking about like what's a stronger acid like water or ethanol for instance and why right because you react nice. it with water and then you see what the conjugate base does and then you evaluate yeah. the conjugate base and yeah um that would help like tenfold if you could yeah, send sure. it I'll over send it you. i'd really yeah. appreciate it yeah yeah definitely i just need to find it <laughs> then i i know no I know no I'm worries right. yeah no no worries cool yeah i'll put i'll post it on the on the user portal somewhere too i'll make a spot for it because that does need to be in there thank you yeah no problem And for everybody listening, what Sharon's Sharon's one of the students in the original boot camp, the very first one that just finished up, what two weeks ago. Um, uh, what she's talking about is there's a day where we didn't get everything I wanted to get done in acids and bases, and so what I did was I was just like, okay, we'll just do an extra meeting. So we and ended up extending that boot camp by like almost two full weeks just because there was more stuff I wanted us to do prior to it being over. And so you can bet that like, and if anybody has worked with our company at any point, you'll know this to be true that we'll, we're always going to do more than we say we're going to do rather than less, or hopefully anyway, if anybody thinks that that is different than, than what I'm saying, then let me know because I'll fix it. Um, just because that's how we do business. That's just making things as good as they can be. Not to virtue signal too much. And Joe, I don't know if you saw the chat. Um, but oh, I no, think... I've not been paying attention to the chat. I do not even know where my chat thing is. Thank you, though. Yeah, Arcana's um, put um, a question there. Uh, when is the best time to start with this course? Um, what do you mean by that? Do you mean, like, when is the best time? So we have the start dates on the website right now. Um, or do you mean, like, within your MCAT prep, when is the best time to start? Because I, you know, like, I mean, I would say soon is, uh, you know, like the, the 17th is when the boot camp starts and the 18th is when the master class starts. I'm going to be so busy with these things going on. I'm realizing that right now. Um, Cause then I'll have six a week, but uh, yeah, I would say that, that, so the boot camp is great, is a great starting point for anybody who's getting started on MCAT prep. And it's also really good. I think that, you know, there are many people who took the boot camp this time, the first two times around here who were pretty deep into MCAT prep already. And they told me that it was super useful for them as well, because even though they'd been through the content a few times, I bet you anything that you don't know all of it. And I know people say it all the time. It's like, I know everything about content, but I'm not getting the score I want. You probably don't know everything about content because I forget stuff and I've been teaching this stupid thing for over a decade. So um, just to hear things connected in a way that you haven't before and to gain a deeper understanding is always useful. So that's the boot camp. So I would say that you can start the boot camp anytime. The master class I recommend having at least been through one pass on content first, at least one, uh, just because we're going to go really fast in the meetings and we're going to connect ideas in a way that assumes you've already heard of some of them before from all of them before. And so like, that's the the primary difference there. It's like a good order to do this and is just be like, take the boot camp, take the master class right after. Some people could do them both at the same time. Um, which is why I didn't make there be any overlap in the meetings. There'd be no meetings happening simultaneously, just in case somebody does want to do that. 
And also, if you're already a 1SM student, meaning that you've taken one of these courses or you're a tutoring student, then you get a discount. And so it wouldn't be the sum of the two together if you wanted to do both. You get a discount on the second one. Um, if there's um, like students that like say that are in the master class and um, say they may have not gotten through all that first pass of content review in like certain areas, how would you like, um, I guess, uh, recommend for them to like kind of review a little bit of content and then doing with yeah, you role. The, I mean, I would say like going or, through or in practice in, questions. Going through it in U World is a really good. I you know like just seeing it as you run into practice questions does work. It's the same reason that like Rosetta Stone works for languages total immersion. Um, but yeah, so that so that's what I would that'd be like my first answer. Depending on how far you are from your test, my second answer would be if you have a long time before your test, just go read those chapters or go like back and if you have access to the bootcamp videos, go back and watch those. Um, that would be my recommendation. The more times you see all this stuff, the, I'm a huge fan of repetition over just like being crazy thorough on any one pass is like, the more times you see the stuff, the more connected everything is going to be for you. Yeah, Sharon, please definitely bug me if you haven't heard from me on that by like, not tomorrow, next day, because <laughs> that's, that's when that's Thursday? likely going to go up is, is day after tomorrow. Cause Friday I need or Thursday? Friday. Yeah. All right. I will see you then. All right. All right. Thanks, Perfect. Everyone. Yeah. Have a great rest of the evening. For sure. See you. Bye. Bye. Any other questions? One, one question people frequently ask about these courses is how long do we have access to the stuff after? Um, my answer is gen generally been like forever ish, something like that, like quite a while. <laughs> um so yeah that's that like for instance the people who did the first round of the boot camp still have access to everything it's been over for two weeks and i told them they'll probably have generally speaking i'm going to say the the rule unless we say otherwise is at least the rest of the year so at least the end of 2024 so i'm not trying to like steal anybody's access from stuff and stuff we already made that exists and it's actually more work for me to take it away than for you to keep it so um we're not going to be like oh charge us you know, give us 200 more dollars if you want more access. I think that's dumb. Um, another question I have is um, how or is there a way for like, for there to be um, like a way for like students to get in contact with other students like or That's something I'm trying um, to build. I'm, I'm, it's been harder yeah. than I thought it would be to build a functioning discussion board on, on this thing, but I'm not, or, you know, I'm not a developer and I'm the one that built all of this. Uh, or, or not a discussion board or like, um, and I'm, I'm thinking, or I, I was also thinking of, you know, like maybe like, um, cause I know in some of my like classes from university, like we would have, you know, a class group chat and, you know, there would yeah. be like say 150 or 200, you know, like in that class or, you know, how many yeah. of our students there I, are. And I'm I don't know if say, that could be something. My take on that is that you're all welcome to, to, to make that happen. I am probably not going to oversee that just unless I'm doing it like on our discussion board, just because I don't want any liability, um, I, which I know is ridiculous, but it's just like, that's, I have to start thinking that way a little bit. So, yeah. Um, so, but you know, if you're if you're able to find people in the class that want to do it, like you know, I know you've sent stuff out at the end of the boot camp before, then I think that's a good idea. I will try to get a discussion board in this next one, though. I think the discussion board is more important in the master class than anything we've done so far, uh, just because that that will merit more discussion. But I think I know how to build it. It's just a matter of doing it that I need to figure out. So yeah, I I didn't know how to code when I started this company. <laughs> it's gotten ridiculous. Like I'm like now I do all the AI stuff, but. Um, Cassandra asked a question in the chat, says, I'm sorry for joining late. How's the bootcamp structured? Is it like university lectures or how would you explain it? Are there pre-recorded videos we review ourselves? 
Uh, yes, there's a lot of stuff. So, so the way that the boot camp is structured, I went through and showed this. I'll, I'll give it like a really quick rundown in the user portal here. And if anybody has any other questions, also feel free to ask as I go through this now that some of you have seen all of this. So in the user portal for the boot camp, it starts here. And uh, this first, this top part is just a video I made of me telling you how to go through it. Next spot down here has information about th this My MCAT section. This is just a place for you to track all of your goals and uh, your best folding, your diagnostic, et cetera. But then it also has a uh, MCAT syllabus that is yours personally inside of this section. So that's where if you just click like underneath MCAT syllabus, everybody has their own version of this. And here's where at the beginning of the boot camp, you meet one-on-one -on -one with one of our tutors to build this thing out, to come up with, there's all this stuff associated with the course that's in the gray columns, but in the white columns, you'll enter in things that you and the tutor decide would be useful for you on your particular MCAT journey, depending on where you are, how deep into it you are, when your test is, et cetera. Um, so then that'll just be like a really good study plan for you to follow throughout. So you don't have to worry about looking other stuff up to try to find more resources to study. There should be plenty here. Uh, and then you can see, and as we go down here further, there's a place for you to enter in all of your full length exams here, as well as your U world scores in this spot. Again, this is just data tracking stuff, um, but it is useful to track your progress over time. And then down here is where most of the course actually exists. Um, for instance, each of these are the, the lectures that we've done inside the course. This course is six lectures in right now. We actually just did this up with one last night. Um, so you can see that the ones that we haven't done yet, obviously don't have videos associated, but the ones that we have, if you want to review any of it, you can uh, you can just click on the video associated with that one and just open it up and review the lecture. Here we were going through a passage, but we do a lot of stuff where we're just talking about um, we'll I'll bring in practice problems and really try to connect ideas across disciplines as much as possible during these meetings. Uh, so that's a lot of what the lectures do look like. Just a lot of drawing things out, a lot of explaining topics. I do ask people for you know for their feedback during the meetings as much as possible so I can gain a sense of where you are and how quickly we can move through things. But then if you click on the see more tab on any of these, it will open a bigger page for that individual lecture where you can see like what is what all is associated with the lecture. So at the beginning of each meeting or before each meeting, we're gonna have quizzes that we've made for you to go through that will help you review the topics that are to be covered in that meeting. Because I'm, during the meetings, I'm gonna go a lot more in depth in each thing and also work to connect the most difficult problematic components of each idea to one another so that you can have to memorize less and seek instead to learn more for understanding, which is what this test really rewards in a huge way. Uh, so there are quizzes we've made. We've also got quizzes from Chad's prep. These are quizzes. These are short videos that you can watch with quizzes associated. And Chad has gone through, Chad's been teaching him for like two decades. He's been in it longer than I have. Um, but he's gone through and linked up each of his pieces of content, whether it be quizzes or videos or study guides with each of our lectures so that you can just go look at his stuff and review in preparation for our lectures because our lectures are a little higher level, more complex, but more MCAT associated as well. And then we've also linked the Kaplan chapters if you prefer to use that as a means of reviewing as well. So I don't recommend doing Kaplan chapter and Chad's prep and our quiz. Pick one of those. And whatever is most relevant to your learning style, that's the one you should probably do. We also have linked up all the Khan Academy videos with this as well. Um, and then after the meetings are over, we have these UWorld test IDs that we've created that we want you to go back in and do UWorld questions associated with that meeting. So that, for instance, if we've talked about recently acids and bases and solubility and equilibrium and electric chemistry, then that might be the set of UO questions that you have to do so that you can directly apply the knowledge you learned during the meeting, considerations we made during the meeting to the UO questions themselves to see the context in which they'd actually be tested on the MCAT. Uh, so that is, you know, I know that I said it may be quick, but that is a brief <laughs> rundown of, of all of the bootcamp stuff. There's also this MCAT AI assistant, which I steal every chance I can to show it off. Um, just because I'm excited that we're like the first people to have made one of these completely. I know Blueprint has our cars thing, but ours does all of it. So um, you can just ask this thing any question on the MCAT and you get access to this for free with the course. And you so you can ask it any question. It should be able to answer it. But you can also screenshot practice questions and drop them in. So like, here's a practice question. And then you can say stuff like explain how to solve this question, please. And it will. I know I sound like such a broken record to those of you who've been here the whole time. <laughs> I just did this whole thing. Um, anyway, any questions from there? Taking forever this time. Oh, there we go. But it also gave a longer answer this time.
And you can always ask follow-up questions from the questions that it that it um, that it for, from the answers that it gives you. Any other questions while we're still here? I need to do that thing that we're like club promoters and people will like spike the audience with their people, have them ask all the right questions. I'm kidding. Now the questions have been pretty good. Um, so I have a um, follow up question of what we were talking about. Um, so like, say like if, um, for example, like if I would like to like, um, or like, would you be, would you be like willing to say for if, if I send like my, um, phone number or like a link to a group chat for you to like, send it to everyone in the, in like, for example, in, in a certain like class. And then like, if somebody wants to join it, they can, and if they don't, then, then they just ignore it. I can do or... that. Yeah, I can do that. If you, if you send like, if you make like some chat room or something like that, I, I'm, cool doing that um okay. yeah 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 I don't want to yeah. I don't want to push it too hard on people just because I don't want to pressure people to like give out their contact information I'm just trying to think about all the different angles here um but I think I can I really do think that this time that I can create a discussion board associated with the class um success what is the success rate of this course so two different stories here because the boot camp we've done twice now the this will be the first time we're doing the master class just so everybody is fully aware of that that said i've taught mcat for my whole life it seems and um i taught the kaplan live online course for four years before i started this company and have done a ton of tutoring and so i know what this this all should look like um we haven't had a ton of people who have taken this class take the test yet just by virtue of how of the short period of time we've been doing it but our students who have taken the MCAT with us this last year had an average score of 516.1. Um, the most of that is in the tutoring side of, or all of that is in the tutoring side of things for us. But 516 is a is a really good score. And basically the difference between this and the tutoring is that the tutoring does have more personalized touch point. Um, on the other hand, I'm teaching almost all of this. And not to say that I'm like way better than our tutors are because I'm not way better than our tutors are because I've you know trained them all and know that they do a really good job but there is a slight difference there um and that this is way cheaper <laughs> than than tutoring because tutoring is you know by virtue of it being one-on-one -on -one, um there's just a certain overhead that has to come with that in order for it to be good so uh I would expect that it would be something it's going to be I will expect that it's probably going to be close to that number if not I mean, if it if it is off, it'll probably be off more due to a sample size thing than than due to a quality thing, I would think. But again, I I can't say that with certainty. So that's my answer. I know again, like super nuanced answer. But I'm an open book on this stuff. Like I I recognize that this company has been around a very short period of time. Like we've been around three years. We've had about 500 students go through our program now. Um, so not an infinitely short period of time. There were definitely people who signed up when it was shorter, uh, but also don't have the same period track record at everything that Kaplan does. You also don't get to talk to the CEO of Kaplan and they also probably don't know anything about the MCAT. <laughs> and and yeah, so that's that's where we are right now with this. Use this and him to med school. Yes, for sure. Um, that is something that we're going to be bolstering a lot this year. So the last couple of years, what we've had is we've had a couple of people who, well, four people technically, who have been on admissions committees before their attendings, either attendings or residents who have been on admissions committees before, and they will just help you go over your application. This year, we're going to have more offering on that front. Um, we're looking at a couple of different partnerships, basically just trying to make it as good as our MCAT side has been which is hard for me because I'm not the admissions expert like I am the MCAT expert. I went to medical school, but I only know my medical school application process. So I'm trying to control. That's been a little trickier for me. The MCAT's easy for me just because, you know, that's what I know a lot about. But um, but the people who do admissions with us know everything about admissions. It's just a matter of figuring out how to deliver that to people in a cost-effective manner because they're all attendings. <laughs> and so, you know, like, 
they could otherwise be making $400 an hour in their other job. And we're not going to charge $400 an hour for admissions stuff. So, yeah. We'll probably be launching. This is the first time I've even announced this to anybody. We'll probably be launching an admissions course starting at the end of this month or beginning of March. We're already kind of working on it right now. Just one more thing to, to work on, to think about. And that'll be a lot shorter than all these MCAT courses are. It's probably, it's likely going to be like four meetings that'll focus on like essays, interviewing. Um, I can't remember what the rest of it was. The, I, I don't have anything to do with it other than building the user interface. And I guess hiring the people who are doing it. <laughs> but um, any other questions at all? Um, how would you, um, or like, w would you recommend tutoring with, you know, one of these, with, with the master class, or, you know, you can also talk with the, with the boot camp as well, um, or kind of, or do you think just maybe just doing like the master class is that, would that be good to like have, um, like guidance, you know, in, like someone leading us and, through the practice questions through the different you know types of practice. Yeah. Questions. I think that, I think that, in, I mean, like adding the tutoring on is never going to hurt. So like given infinite money, <laughs> then like, you know, then I'm going to say, yeah, sure. Do, do a tutoring meeting every day. And like, you know, like all of that stuff, but from a cost perspective, like trying to think about efficiency of dollars, the way that I'm viewing these courses right now are as, I started out thinking it's a good supplement, but if you do the boot camp and the master class, I feel like that should be really good. You know, like I don't know that you need additional tutoring because you also get access to all the office hours. And so yeah, that's kind of where I am not trying to like kill my own tutoring thing, because like that's literally what got this company where it is. But um I think that it's different for di different people need different levels of explanation for things as well. Like I'm somebody who during most of the studying that I've done didn't really do any, didn't really go to class at all because I learn a little bit slower than like what class would usually dictate, except for whenever I already have a good idea of something and I'm a lot faster. And so class wasn't great for me and I never really did too, but I just sat around and read stuff. But then other people benefit a ton from having an explanation. Like I had one of my friends in med school, he made a 4.0 all the way through med school, but he didn't miss a single day of class the whole like four years that we were there. And it's because he sucks at sitting down and, and reading the book to himself and understanding what it means, but just crushes it whenever he has somebody explain it to him. And so, you know, different people are just very, very different. Um, if you're somebody who needs more one-on-one, -on -one, then it could be beneficial to have tutoring associated with it as well. The people who I've talked to who are doing both simultaneously and like actively doing both simultaneously seem to be having, seem to find that that is pretty useful at this point. Um, but I haven't talked to everybody about that. So, yeah. Right now where we are with these courses, I think that they're probably the best value thing just because they're cheaper than the tutoring is. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we've only run a few of them. And so I'm, I'm never going to charge as much as Kaplan or Princeton or Blueprint does for their courses because I think that's silly. But... But I also just want to make sure that everything is as good as it can be on this before we would increase any prices at all. And so the courses are really, really good value right now.